Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 244. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another co-hosted episode with the fabulous Joanna Hennen. Today, we talk about transformation, how much transformation we can actually expect from doing transformation work and mindset work. We are both huge fans of personal development transformational work, mindset work, whatever you want to call it. And Joanna has just come back from the Site K Basic Workshop, which I did almost five years ago. Now, I always say that my life is before Site K and after Site K because it marked such a huge difference in my life. And in this episode, we talk about why this kind of work is so powerful and so life-changing. I think this is a really good episode and I'm really excited to be releasing it to you. So in this episode, we ask these questions. What are these transformational tools and how do they work? What does transformation actually mean? Why isn't everyone who uses these tools rich and successful already? Is there such a real thing as a quick fix? Does that really exist? And what about non-spiritual people who are successful? How did they make it happen without doing this transformational work? We ask, is there a danger in doing too much transformational work? And is big transformation really possible? How often do we need to do transformation work or mindset work? And are we ever really done with this kind of work? Or is it a never-ending process? So in this episode, you're going to learn how to create real transformation from using transformational tools and doing mindset work. We're going to talk about what's really possible when you do transformation work. You're going to learn examples of what real transformation looks like and why transformation work on its own isn't enough, and what you need to do alongside it. You've got to get a balance in there. How to manage your expectations when doing transformation work, and why you need to commit and make this work a habit, and what that habit looks like, because it's going to be different for everyone. So again, I'm really excited about this episode. I think it's a great conversation, and I think that you will find it interesting and useful. And I hope that if you don't already have a habit of doing mindset work and doing transformation work, that this will inspire you to look at how to make that happen. So without further ado, here's the episode. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, it's Holly Wharton and Joanna Hennen, and we are back with another co-hosted episode. This is a really juicy topic that we're both excited about. We are going to be talking about how transformational are transformational tools? Like, are they actually transformational? Do you actually get big changes from them? And if not, why are we all not like super successful? So really excited to just dig right into the episode. So let's start out by talking about what are transformational tools and how do they work? Wow. Well, that's in itself is, is a yeah. big topic. Isn't it? <laughs> We were talking about before we started recording is that transformational tools are the ones that promise transformation at some kind of deeper level, mm-hmm. right? So we were talking specifically about Psych K, which you are a fan of. I have just become a huge fan of following a workshop just this past weekend and things like EFT, I guess kinesiology, although that a bit less because you can't do it yourself. Is there anything else you can do yourself? Well, heart-centered energy work I use with myself. Can you use NLP with yourself? I guess kind of. Yeah, I'm just not an NLP expert, so I don't yeah, actually I mean, know. I trained in it years ago and then don't really ever use it. And I think actually Site K and EFT will do for yeah. as examples. Yeah. If anybody else thinks of other tools that promise transformation, then, uh, then you can add them to the list. Mm. And I think that all the things that we talk about will apply. Yeah. 
So yeah, so transformational tools are tools that promise transformation of some kind, usually at a deeper level. Mm. So at cellular level, at subconscious level, energetic something level. energetic level. So any sort of kind of energy clearings mm -hmm. as well, I think would fall into this category. Yeah, like smudging. As soon as you said energy clearings, I thought of like smudging using sage or something like that. Yeah, anything like that. Would... Very different, but that's promising mm -hmm. transformation through kind of decluttering the crappy energy. Yeah, or any of those things where you kind of let your negative beliefs and thoughts kind of mm. sink into the ground or let them yeah. be taken away. Like I myself also have a process that I use with, with clients where we kind of take the negative stuff out of the body and then let it go. I just wonder how transformational they are and maybe what that means. What does transformation mean to you? Holly? Exactly. Yeah. So that's a really important question. So transformation to me means big changes. And I guess transformation to me is like, ooh, big changes. <laughs> But really, it could be small changes, too. So it could be changes in how you feel, changes in your beliefs, changes in the sense of releasing blocks, changes in how you approach things, changes in perspective. It's change, really. I think as you were talking, I realized that my definition of transformation has really changed since I kind of set out on the personal development and even like online business journey, mm. entrepreneurial journey. And I think like now... I can appreciate that transformation can be both big and small and that it's really about kind of my quality of life and that things are easier for me and I have more clarity and stuff like that. Whereas I think when I started, what I expected from like I was doing EFT at the time was like huge results. I mean, I remember like tapping until like my face was... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't sore, but it was probably good. I used to tap for ages. It was all around like how I wanted more money to be flowing in my business. And, yeah. and I expected like that to mm -hmm. actually transform my reality. Yeah. And well, is that what's meant by transformation? I think that's one of the types of transformation. So how did you start out on this transformational journey? Like how did you first start thinking about the fact that you could have transformations in your life? I can't even remember like how I came across EFT. EFT, for anybody who's listening and doesn't know, is yeah. emotional freedom technique, better known as tapping. And if you want to know what it is more specifically, you can YouTube it. It's basically tapping on certain points on your face and body. It's the acupressure points. It's like the acupuncture, but without the needles. I just remember like thinking that this is a really easy tool. Like I wanted this big change in my life. So I was in a job and I started a business and I wanted that business to be like immediately successful and be bringing in loads and loads of money. Then somebody showed me EFT and I was like, oh, cool. You know, so if I do this every day, <laughs> surely by next month, <laughs> it'll be done. You know? <laughs> And I think that's done bit. Now, yeah. from my perspective now, I think the done bit is the problem because maybe sometimes at our at the beginning of our journey or at some point, that's what we think the transformation is done. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like there's an end to the journey. Like, I'm going to get my car and I'm going to drive to the store. And once I get to the store, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's not how it works. Is no. It? <laughs> no, but it's so tempting to see personal development and transformational work as a journey that has an end. But it really, for a lot of us, I think it's really not going to end until the day we die if we're always striving to know ourselves better and create changes. I think so. I, unless we stop doing the work, yeah. right? And like, I've heard this many times that the only difference between really super, super successful people, the people that, that we would be looking up to right now, and us who are maybe on the way is that the super, super successful people regularly move through their stuff. Mm. Like they identify the next block or series of blocks, and they do something to release that or transform that into something that's more supportive to what they want. So I guess if we choose to keep moving, then yeah, we're going to be doing this till the day we die. We'll be tapping yeah. on my deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> so today, what would you say are your favorite tools for transformation? Oh, today is definitely psych K <laughs> because I just returned from this workshop and I'm just so, so excited. <laughs> so I find psych K a lot easier than EFT quicker. Oh, yeah. Plus, I don't have to always feel all that pesky stuff yeah, <laughs> coming up again. Exactly. I don't have to let it rise up again. I understand that EFT has its place and it's actually yeah. recently mutual friend, Kara Wild, helped mm. me transform something very, very deep mm -hmm. using EFT and that needed me to be willing to feel all the stuff. But that's not necessarily like necessary all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
And I always say this, is that I think everyone's got to find the transformational modality that works for them. Because I trained in NLP, because that was the first thing I ever heard of for transforming stuff like this, but it just, it didn't resonate with me and I never used it with clients. I'm sorry, but I always, always forget that you're trained in NLP. Holly's actually going to come visit me in real life in a couple of days. So you're going to have to tell me all about NLP because I don't really know anything about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm really grateful for having done that training. I did it at the same school where I trained as a coach. It was great experience, but I never used it with myself or with clients. And so that just wasn't my thing, but it was the only thing I'd ever heard of. And then as I kind of got more into this really deep transformational journey, I discovered EFT and I liked that, but then I discovered Psych K. And like I always say, my life is before Psych K and after Psych K. I haven't heard you talk about this in any detail. And okay. I would really, really love to hear about why that division of yeah. before Psych K and after Psych K. What do you think like was so, so life changing about it? Hmm. Because first of all, it resonated with me. It was easy. And I think the power of having a tool that I could use with myself whenever I wanted, whenever I needed to, was the big difference. Because Psyche, hey, the reason I discovered it was because a friend of mine from Argentina, who's a psychiatrist, had trained in Psyche hey, and highly recommended it to me for some personal stuff that I was working on that wasn't shifting with anything. And so he said, you know, go see a facilitator, have some sessions, and then train in it. And I had a couple of sessions with a couple of different people and it just didn't resonate with me. And luckily my husband kept pushing me and saying like, just do the basic workshop, do the basic workshop. And so I did it. And that was five years ago. And it just completely changed my life because as same, I was in the same place you are now. I got back home. I was so excited about it. I had my manual and every day for months after doing the basic workshop, I spent about an hour a day changing beliefs. And I saw big changes because I was doing a lot of work. I like what? So I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. We want to know like what those changes were. <laughs> okay. All right. So at the time, I remember I was working with a coach. My business wasn't the right fit at that time. I was still doing the social media stuff. I remember my coach saying, you know, between now and the next session, I want you to reach out to five people to approach them, like do a JV with you to promote your upcoming online course. And I remember leaving that to the last minute because I was just like, oh my God. Like, I just don't want to do this. I hate asking people for favors. And of course, it's not a favor because they're getting an affiliate money. Oh, it just felt I just hated it. I didn't want to do it. And so I just sat down and I did some belief work on it. And I did identify all my fears and my blocks and my limiting beliefs, did a bunch of balances using Site K. And then it was like, all of a sudden, it was just easy to write the emails. It was easy to take action. And that to me is the biggest thing that I've experienced using Psych K not only with myself, but it's the biggest the kind of change that my clients have seen is that by changing their beliefs at the subconscious level, it's easier for them to take the actions they need to take to build their business. That's what I just experienced mm -hmm. as well. I have a very similar example where it just became easier. And yeah. really, I mean, what really struck me about Psych K and kind of theory underneath it, underlying it, is the fact that. 95% of our actions are controlled by the subconscious, so by those beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I kind of knew this, it's not exactly like a new thing, right? Yeah. But it was just the first time that I really thought about that, because that just means that whenever you're trying to do something, it requires a lot of effort, and a lot of willpower. You can still do it, mm. like I've been doing it, right? But yeah. it just took me two weeks of procrastinating and kind of yeah. going, oh, why are I, you know, I know I want this, why am I not doing it? If you transform the beliefs underneath, then that action becomes simpler. Now, mm. it doesn't mean that your whole life will transform within the next month, right? Right. Because it just means that, that you'll be able to take the action that you know will the move results. you closer. Yeah. This is it. I mean, this is the basic issue around this, why I think people get frustrated because mm. people want that huge transformation in their life. People want the result. Yeah, that's the thing. People want big change fast. They want a quick fix. Mm. And yes. it's so easy to think that either we're going to go to a psyche facilitator or an EFT practitioner, or we're going to train these techniques and use them for ourselves, and it's going to be a quick fix. Like all of our problems are going to be done, like you said, within a month. I'm just going to use this thing every day for a month, and my life is going to be exactly what I want. I mean, at least for me, it hasn't been the reality. I trained in Psyche K five years ago, and I still use it with myself, and I also use the heart-centered energy work with myself, and I've seen massive changes in my life. It's so much easier for me to take action. I All the books that I released a couple of years ago, I never would have put those books out if I hadn't done the belief work to support that. I would have been terrified. I was so terrified to write a book and put it on Amazon. 
but I did it because I transformed the beliefs. So it's like I've been able to take these actions that I wanted to take, but it's not like my entire life is, I don't know. Done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I that's, that's really it. And I guess, I mean, we started, we decided to talk about this because one of the things that I've been thinking about since the Site K workshop, so not for very long, for like a couple of days, but Site K and other tools, like mm. they promise transformation and they can transform all your limiting beliefs and tackle all that stuff, right? Mm. So why isn't every person who knows Site K and EFT like super successful and super rich? Like, as you said before, like, why aren't we like swimming in cash? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right? Yeah. Well, I think it's a number of things. First of all, you've got to do the work. Like you've got to actually use the technique to change your beliefs to take. And you've got to take the action. Yeah. And if you want big transformation, you've got to take big actions. Yeah. Oh, gosh, there's so much here <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> so, yeah, so you have to do the work. Like I say this a lot for people who like show up to my the challenges I run or like who read my stuff at the end of blog posts. Like I'll often say, like, just reading this blog post isn't going to do anything for you. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to actually implement this. Yeah and do something with it and let it influence your next step, right? So just kind of learning EFT or Psych K or like knowing that they exist hmm. isn't going to do anything. And it does take a commitment to do yeah. it every day. I mean, it that's does. impressive what you did, Holly. I mean, I was so obsessed with the tool and I once I started seeing results, it was like so easy to keep going. But one of my messages that I feel like I haven't been very successful in implanting in people's minds is you've got to make this work a habit. You've got to make mindset work a habit. You've got to make transformation work a habit. You've got to make energy work a habit, whatever you call it. You have got to make this stuff a habit where you do it every day, every other day, every week, whatever. But so you're constantly identifying what's blocking you, what's holding you back and then transforming the beliefs or the energy around that so you can take the action to move forward. But it's got to be a habit on a regular basis. Yeah, so that actually brings us to one of the other issues that I think could explain why not all practitioners of transformational tools are like rich and famous mm. and successful is the concept of honesty. Like in order to identify those beliefs, you have yeah. to be really willing to be honest with yourself. When yeah. I did this on myself the other evening about an offering that I'm currently running, that I'm starting, mm. like it was actually quite confrontational like mm. with myself to sit down and be like, okay, I'm cho I like I want to do this. There's something off. What is it? Like what is it that that I actually believe about this? Cuz I'm the kind of person I teach stuff that's based in the law of attraction like I want to myself believe that anything is possible. So it's actually mm. quite difficult for me to admit that I don't believe that my success with this offer, with this group program is possible. Mm. That was a really hard thing to do and kind of write down. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You've got to be willing to do the deep work and the hard work and the challenging work. You've got to be willing to dig deep and look at your mind crap and recognize what your fears are and write them down on a piece of paper so you can see them and work with them. And I think a lot of people aren't willing to go that deep. I think that's a really, really important point. And now like, I know that certainly when I started doing EFT all those years ago, mm -hmm. I was not willing to go deep. Yeah. Like I was just like using other people's scripts, like EFT works on the concept that you're supposed to feel the thing that you're clearing as you're clearing it so that it's mm. disassociated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just very, very on the surface yeah. with all that. So it's actually no, I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I thought just by doing it, something would change, something would transform, but I wasn't going deep enough. Mm. And that's sometimes difficult to do when you're, it's scary to go in there. It is. It is. I think it's important to realize that the more you do this, the more results you're going to get. I mean, I often have clients that will, and I've been kind of tightening my boundaries on this, but I have in the past had clients that have kind of stretched out the time between sessions because they'll say, oh, I don't really have anything to work on. And I'm thinking in my mind, I know that's absolute bullshit because if I had stuff to work on for an hour a day, every single day, you can come up with something between now and next week. Like, you can come up with a lot of things if you're willing to go there. And yeah, those are the people uh, I really want to work with. It's the people who want to dig deep and get rid of that crap. It does take a certain commitment yeah. to your goal. Yeah. You have to really want it, right? Yeah. Because just kind of jumping on the entrepreneurship train, it's not going to do it. You actually have to really, really want it to dig up some of that stuff. And mm. yes, I think that's another reason for, you for why not all <laughs> practitioners, facilitators are super successful is that honesty bit mm. of doing it with themselves. Yeah. I think probably a lot of them are great at facilitating yeah. other people's transformation. Yeah. But doing it for yourself is a mm. lot harder. And of course, there will always be things that you will need somebody else for, right? Yeah. 
And I always say that. I always say, I always work with myself, but I also always have someone else that I work with because I'm in my head all day, every day. So there are things that I can't access because I've got grunt and gotten comfortable with it. It's normal to me. So I need someone else to kind of dig deep in my head and pick stuff out. This is going to be a fun holiday we're doing together, yes, right? Yes. We're just going to sit in my house and <laughs> do Psyche like... on each other. <laughs> I, can, I can already see it. <laughs> and just pick the crap out of each other's minds and clear it. <laughs> well, to each their own. And this is our idea of fun. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so my question is, what about people who appear to be non-spiritual people? who are clearly successful? Like, how did they get there? Do they not just not need this stuff? Does maybe not everyone need to do this stuff? Like, how does that happen? The word that's coming to me right now, or the idea, you asked me that question before we started, and I had no idea. But I think the answer to that is they do it through hard work and yeah. hustle. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So you can either do it the hard way and just hustle, 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 and feel the fear and do it anyway. Or yeah. you can do it the softer way, which is, clearing the stuff so that you can take action more easily. Yeah, and with a site K, it's not just clearing the stuff, it's actually imprinting beliefs that are supportive. Exactly. So it's not just clearing the old ones. So great about it, I think. You're not just clearing, you're actually like putting in yeah. beliefs that are more supportive. So the action becomes easier. And my example for this is actually not business related, but weight loss related. Because like I've been trying to lose weight for so many years and, you know, and it's just all willpower. And so it doesn't work because... Yeah come evening, my willpower is kind of, <laughs> and it just doesn't work. But I don't have any results to report yet. But I was hoping that Psych K would be the answer to that mm. for me. Because if I'm kind of always trying to eat well and exercise and whatever, but my underlying belief, which I think is the case, I haven't tested, but I think is the case is that it won't work for me anyway, yeah. or it's too late because I'm too old, then just not going to do anything, right? I'm just going to keep self-sabotaging because I want my reality to match my beliefs. Right. And I think if I had super willpower or I really made myself, I could do it without the belief work. So it's not like it's impossible. It's just right. harder. But I think it's harder for us because we are the kind of people who want personal transformation and to make things easier. But I think perhaps there's no right way. Like for some people, the hustle and the hard work, that's their right way because they like that. And for other people like us, it's we don't want the hard work. We want the ease and the transformation. What do you think? I don't know. I wonder if people really, really like to work hard or if that's just like an escape from something else. Mm. Or if that's just all they know and they don't know or that there's an easier way. Or don't believe that there's yeah. an easier way. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. I mean, there are people who love to work, but always at the expense of something else. So it doesn't seem like that that happiness is true. Yeah. Gained yeah. in that way. So I do think like that if more people committed to using such tools, things would be just easier for them. Mm. It doesn't mean that everybody would experience miracles all the time. But because right. I think it's not just about like the effort or the willpower that has to be sustained over a mm. period of time. It's like today you have to say, oh, I'm not going to eat those cookies. Then tomorrow you have to do the same thing. And yeah. The day after the same thing. And it it's doesn't diminish. Yeah. Yeah. And effort is just the same. I mean, unless like quit all sugar and you stop having cravings. But that's an extreme example. Yeah. And like for normal average behavior, you have to have that willpower every single day. And yeah. that's really hard. I think that's tiring. And it's tiring. Yeah. And I guess it's the same. Well, I mean, not I guess. I'm sure it's the same for um for business or for mm. building any sort of dream or whatever. Like yeah. That, if you think your business is or if you think like your work is not valuable, it's really hard to get up every day and try to sell people stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the big things that a lot of people don't value their knowledge. They don't value what they bring to their business. Mm -hmm. And so if your so sense of self-worth is really low, it's going to be really hard to charge for your services, to charge the right price for your services and to make money from your business. There's so many aspects of business that have yeah. like underlying beliefs that can just completely support you or keep you stuck. I just remembered that you muscle test for the perfect price yeah. <laughs> for your offer. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a cool way of using yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Another really nice thing about Psych K specifically mm. that EFT doesn't have, I think. Yeah is the muscle testing because yeah. you know when it's done. Yeah, exactly. I really like that. It feels like some kind of confirmation because once you change a belief, you never have to redo that particular belief again. Right. It's like there's an assurance, you know, yeah, yeah. like it's tested strong. Okay, so that one's done. Like I don't have to worry about that anymore. Exactly. And there's something to that because like when I did them around my program, a couple of days later, I was like, went back into the pattern of, oh, I don't know. Da, da, da. But and that, my brain said, but you've already done that. That one's done. That's the old pattern. Like Stop I was aware of that. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. 
question was, why <laughs> <laughs> why aren't all these facilitators super successful? They don't do the work. Not right. everybody does the work. Not everybody is willing to be honest and dig stuff up. Yeah. And not everyone and takes the action. Not everybody takes the action. And then the successful people who don't use these tools. Yeah. Yeah, they can be successful, but I guess it's through hustle and hard work. Yeah. That also seems too simplistic, Holly, though. I mean, well, there must be successful people who just were lucky. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they knew the right people. They had good contacts. It all just fell into place because they had the support network that they needed. And we don't all have the same limiting beliefs, of course. Exactly, exactly. Some of us come into this world with less mind crap than others. <laughs> or we learn it in our childhood. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. much mind crap we come in with. But yeah. like those first seven years of yeah. life when you're a sponge for everything, I guess there are a lot of everybody makes different decisions, right? Mm. I mean, I particularly came to my new, this business that I have now with a lot of limiting beliefs and fears and blocks that I gained during my first business that I ran for 10 years. I mean, I formed so many unsupportive beliefs there. So I feel like the first couple of years that I was doing Psych K with myself, I was clearing stuff that I had, and I'm still clearing stuff that I'm uncovering from the 10 years that I ran my first business. So... Yeah. yeah, they get stuck in there, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> so what's your opinion about like how often once you choose a transformational yeah. tool? I think we're going to agree that even though these transformational tools might not offer a result, like a big result right away, they do offer enough transformation that it's worth using. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Without a doubt can say that the time that I've invested in doing this work with myself has more than paid off in the results. The return on investment in terms of like time and gains, okay. undeniable. So what's your opinion about how often one should use these tools, whatever tool you choose, and is there a thing as too much? Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. So how often are you supposed to use it? So I think it depends because like I said, in the beginning, I was using it every day for about an hour. And that's because I had a lot of stuff to clear. I was really excited about the technique and I was seeing the results. After several months, I probably tapered down to maybe doing it once a week. And now I would say I do it probably about once a week, every other week. It depends. I kind of go through phases. Like I'll go through a phase where one week I'll do three or four days of work and then the next couple of weeks I won't do anything. So I, it kind of goes in ebbs and flows. And it's almost like I do a lot of work and then I kind of take a lot of action and then that triggers more stuff. Mm -hmm. And so then I do a lot of work and then I take a lot of action. But I think you've got to have that balance between the transformational work and the action. And, and to respond to your question, can you do too much? I mean, I think this is a whole different... Did you want to respond to what I just said before we go into that? Because I think that's a whole different topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you said that there needs to be a balance between the transformational work mm -hmm. and the action. And I think... I mean, aside from the fact that it's the action that'll actually create stuff, that's also because it's only in the action that you'll see the results. Exactly. You can't Otherwise, just... Otherwise, you yeah. don't know if it's working. Exactly. You can't just do this work and then sit back and be like, universe, bring it all to me. I mean, Why not, Holly? Why not? I mean, you can, but I don't know if that's going to get you anything. <laughs> Give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, but yeah, you have to take the action if you want to get the results in your business. You can't just sit back and hope the clients are going to pour through your door. Stampede. Uh, I keep hoping. If yeah. anything's possible, that too should be possible. <laughs> True. You're right. Anything is possible. But do you believe that's possible? Yeah. That's the thing. I think like you need to take the action that you believe will get you there, right? Yeah. And I think that's what it's about because you like I actually do have a belief. Maybe I should experiment on myself. Mm. I do have a belief that if I want to fill my group program, I'm going to have to have like some kind of invitation or sales page and I'm going to have to tell people about it. Mm. Now, maybe that's kind of an obvious thing. I wonder what would happen if I instilled a belief that I don't have to do that stuff, right? Mm. That whether, I don't know, I wonder, I'm, I, might, I might conduct an experiment. <laughs> right. So, so think about how you would like people to sign up for this program. Like what would be your absolute ideal? Yeah. I'll and what do you need to believe to make that happen? So anything is possible, but you yeah. do need to kind of get clear on, on the details then. Cause the, yeah. yeah, and you do need to do something because you, if you kept the program a secret and didn't tell anybody <laughs> about it, obviously no one's going to sign up for it because that's the reality. Like someone needs to know about it. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> right. So is there a thing as too much transformational work? Yeah. So I think there can be. There's two ways there could be too much transformational work. So you can do too much transformation work and just do only transformational work and not take the action, which we've just talked about. You need the balance of both things. And I think you can get to the point where you can get a little burnt out or tired or from doing 
doing too much transformational work. So you really need to be aware of what your energy levels are like, how you're feeling, how you're responding. Because sometimes when you do a lot of work, it can affect you. It can make you tired. Maybe you need more sleep to process the stuff. So you need to be very, very aware of what your body needs and what your system needs as you're doing this work so you can support yourself in other ways. Mm. So it's not so, so much just doing too much work, but ensuring that you don't get burnt out from the results of doing that work because so much stuff is changing that your mind is needs time to get Yeah, up. you need to integrate it as well, yeah, don't you? Exactly. And you do need to rest in between kind of big spiritual or mindset transformation so that it can integrate. Yeah, I'm trying to think like, is there a thing as too much? I think we can get caught up. It's a lot easier to sit here and like EFT it yep. than it is to like get out there and do live streams and kind of tell people how great I am at what I do. Mm hmm. So I think we can, a lot of people get stuck in kind of using transformation work or the need to clear more stuff yeah. as an excuse to, to not get out there and talk to people. And it doesn't have to be like huge things, but just to talk to yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, And that's why I think you always need to pair the transformational work with the action. Even if it's just a little bit of transformation, a little bit of action, a little bit, but always have that action there. Otherwise, you get so caught up in changing beliefs and doing this stuff that you think, oh, I've done all my work for the day. And it's like, yeah, you've done all of your inner work for the day, but you still need to do the outer work for the day yeah that just reminded me is there a song like that i'm sure those aren't the words but a little more transformation a little more action or something. <laughs> maybe we need to write the song maybe that's our next podcast <laughs> no, no, it's a little less conversation a little more action i don't I can't remember what the song was but it is it does exist yeah so i mean my way of doing it is i have a commitment to both mindset and and belief changing or whatever mm -hmm. but mostly in the context of staying high vibration yeah. so that's that's my big thing and i have a half hour slot in my calendar every day for that and I use that slot for whatever I want to do. Sometimes it's actual work, EFT work, I'm struggling with something or now it'll be site K stuff or just reading a book that uplifts me or whatever. But I have that slot and a lot of people are scared to put in that consistent slot. Mm. Even like, I mean, I've left it open every day. Like, it's not like I know exactly what I'll be doing. Plus, like, you know, like today I didn't do it because I had a call at that time in the morning and the day just kind of is flying by and I didn't do it. And is that the end of the world? No, no, no. Because if you're being consistent, like if you've done it six days out of the week and you missed one day, that's not a big deal. But if you're doing it once a month, once every three months, that's when you're like, what results are you expecting from this if you're not going to commit to doing it more you know, frequently? So the answer is to commit to doing it yeah. regularly, but make sure you don't kind of start using it as an excuse because yes. it is a lot more fun to it can be that's also yeah. that's a silly thing to say it can be kind of more safe yeah well yeah because you're doing it with yourself alone in your room office whatever rather than putting yourself out there and getting visible with what you do which i have a strong belief that you do need to be visible with what you do yeah. in order to get known right because mm. that's what kind of means yeah yeah <laughs> to get known you need people to actually know you <laughs> Funny how that works. Go ahead. Transformation actually possible, Holly. I think it is, but I'm not sure. I talked about the quick fix earlier. I think big transformation is possible, but perhaps not in the way we think it's going to happen. I think a lot of us expect miracles, and I'm not going to say they don't happen, but I don't think they always happen. I think a lot of times the changes are subtle, and it's a journey. Yeah, I guess it's the expectation, right? Yeah. We are saying earlier that the founders of both EFT and Psyche, like, they say that you can use their tools to clear these limiting beliefs or to transform beliefs. They don't say that everybody's going to be, like, perfectly healthy and rich. And yet we've kind of misappropriated those tools and the word transformation to mean some kind of quick, huge change in life. But then, Holly, yes. if that's the case and if transformation actually happens in the, these small steps, like, is it still true that the success that we want, the big success for those of us who want kind of big success, like, is it actually possible? I think it is, but I think big success or big transformation also requires deep mindset work and big actions. Mm -hmm. So it's how deep and dark are you willing to go and how big are the actions that you're willing to take? Yeah, you're probably right. I Sometimes, and this conversation is going so kind of smoothly that I sometimes forget that it's being recorded for other people to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say this anyway, even though I've remembered. <laughs> Sometimes like I have moments where I'm like, what if like I spend my whole life yeah. like EFTing and psych King and whatever else 
and nothing really changes that much. Yeah. And that, that thought really scares me. I do believe that success is possible and I do believe that miracles are possible. Mm. But sometimes I wonder with these kind of small transformations, not everybody's going to have success mm. well, or the big success they want. Yeah. But it also depends on how you define success. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's going to be different for everyone. But I know what you mean. And when I look back and I think, well, I've been dedicated my life to making this work a habit with myself for the last five years. Am I rich and famous? No. Yet. But, yet. But I've written and self-published seven books. I've got more in the pipeline. I don't think if you had asked me five years ago, I remember I wanted to write a book five years ago. I wanted to write a book years ago. But did I believe that was possible? Did I believe I was ever going to do it? I don't think so. So I have done things that are much bigger than I thought I was capable of doing. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing to bear in mind, like for anybody listening, like if you think to where you were five years ago, yeah. my husband has to remind me of this all the time because yeah. I always forget. I always kind of, I'm always like, it's not going fast enough. And he's like, just think back to five years ago. Where were you? I yeah. mean, for me, that was really the start of the journey. I had no idea about any of this stuff. Yeah. I, I was really just starting to learn about myself and business, everything. It was really just the beginning. And, mm. and I also have achieved, accomplished lots of things in that time. So it does create change it's yeah it's just something to consider and I think you're right that if we commit to it yeah to both the inner work and the big action then the sky's the limit right yeah exactly exactly so now another topic yeah. for another time Holly that's coming up from this is okay. money specifically that we yeah. should talk about that sometime because that is a really tricky one and sometimes it seems that no matter like how many balances and clearings and mm. whatever else you do around the subject of money it doesn't really shift all that much and why is that yeah or the money comes in but not perhaps from the channels you want it to come through um, so that's another topic. I think it, we should yeah, definitely do that next time. It, it is, but you've <laughs> definitely reminded something, I mean, of something that I wanted to say earlier, which is sometimes we have this clear vision of what we think we want in our lives, but the universe has another idea of where we should be headed or where we are headed or what our life path is. And sometimes we can't see that because we've got the limiting beliefs. And the more we clear the stuff, the more we kind of fine tune our path and get to different places than we would have gotten without doing that work. Yeah, definitely. Definitely like opportunities open up, don't they? Once you clear away the I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy and exactly. all that kind of thing. And I feel like the more I've done this work and the more I've cleared the blocks and the more I've programmed new beliefs that support me, better I know myself. Like it's easier for me to make decisions. It's easier for me to trust myself. It's easier for me to just do stuff mm. in life and in business because I've got more beliefs that support me and less of the beliefs that don't support me. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So our original question, yes. Holly, was... What was our original question? What are, trans <laughs> <laughs> are transformational tools are really transformational? Yes. For me, the answer is without doubt, yes. For me as well. I just really did want to explore this difference between like small changes and yeah. huge miracles. Yeah. And whether like we can still be satisfied with the small transformations keeping in mind the possibility that life might not work out the way we currently want it to. And we never want to be thinking like, oh, that was a waste of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would never consider any of the times that I've spent doing this work with myself to be a waste. It's, it's always produced something. And another thing I think we need to say is you don't always see the results right away. So it's not like you spend an hour of doing mindset work with yourself and then tomorrow it's like, boom, amazing stuff happens. It might take a few weeks. It might take a few months because that's how life works. Like you need to take the actions and those actions lead to stuff happening. But it's not always like 24 hour turnaround. Yes, yeah, so I think the results are possible to get. You're right. Yeah. But it's the action piece that's really, really important. So the transformational tools are just part of a puzzle, right? Yeah. They're part of a bunch of other stuff you need to do that includes action. Yeah. It also includes other things like self-care, right? There's other things I think that are part of that puzzle of success yeah that are needed so i think it's definitely possible it's just we need to manage our expectations of results mm. and what's possible and we need to actually use the tools yes. and take the action exactly good cool. well <laughs> thank you for having this conversation with me <laughs> thank you i always love talking to you holly <laughs> And I hope everyone has found this useful. Anyone listening to this has any questions about this topic, about this episode, about us and the way we work with people, you can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or joanna at joannahennon.com. Cool. <laughs> All right. And if you have any questions, again, get in touch. Let us know what you thought of this and tune in for next time. We'll be talking Bye. about money. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that episode. 
please drop me a line. Let me know what you thought of it. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and get in touch. I would love to share your comments and give you a shout out on the show if you like. I would also love for you to join me in my private Facebook group, Business Mindset Alchemist, so we can continue the conversation there. Podcasting is such a one-way conversation as much as I love it, so I really enjoy getting feedback from people in the group. And that could be comments on this episode or other episodes, ideas of topics and things that you want me to talk about, whatever. Let's talk mindset. Let's talk about the show. So if you head over to hollywharton.com forward slash group, you'll be redirected to the Facebook group. And finally, whether you've been listening to the show for a while or you've just heard your first episode, if you're drawn to learning more about mindset work and you'd like to learn more about how you can work with me, please get in touch or head over to hollywharton.com forward slash call, C-A-L-L, and you can book in a call with me to learn more. I would love to work with you and help you transform your mindset. This is such powerful work. I hope this episode gave you an idea of just how amazing it is. It's been life-changing for me, so I'd love to share that with you. And finally, thank you so much for listening. I keep saying finally, but then I keep talking. So thank you so much for listening. This is the most important part, because if it weren't for you, this podcast wouldn't exist. I wouldn't just talk to silence or talk to no one. So thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on iTunes. It would mean the world to me. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 244 for the show notes on this episode. Next week's episode is a solo show where I talk about how to spring clean your business and why you might want to do that. We've recently had the spring equinox and that inspired me to talk a little bit about the importance of paying attention to where we are in the year and taking actions that coincide with the energies that are going on in different parts of the year. So hope you find that interesting and useful and thanks again. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.